For the last three months, I've filmed every single video that you've seen me upload to this channel in 2024 with the Sony ZV-E10. After 90 days of near daily use, I'm here to answer the question, is this still a viable option in 2024? At this point, this camera is three years old and I'm here to answer that question and give you some details and background in today's video. If you're here for the short answer, the short answer is yes, it is a great camera. I'm actually filming with it now. So this makes 14 videos that I filmed with this camera this year. And if that's all you're looking for, thanks for stopping by, leave a like, drop a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. But if you're looking for a few more details and you wanna hear a little bit more about my experience with this camera after three months of pretty heavy use, stick around. So first we're gonna talk about the bang for buck. I'll start off by saying I'm not a spec sheet person. I'm not gonna read specs off a sheet for you. So uh, if that's the kind of video that you're looking for, if you really want those nitty gritty details and numbers, um, you can probably, you know, check out somebody else's video. I won't be offended. Uh, I just want to give you guys the real uh, kind of perspective that I have. And so this camera is amazing. It is so small and lightweight and I easily would rather pick this up and take this over most of my other more expensive, heavier cameras purely because they're more expensive and heavier. This isn't spec sheet rambling, but it shoots 4K at 30 frames per second. 120 1080p and has s and q mode and all kinds of other features that i'll talk about later in this video that are amazing and it comes in at about 700 dollars unless you can find it on sale or you go open box the way that i did if you want to hear more about that story i have a link to a video somewhere the final point that i want to make especially in the bang for buck category is that this thing is interchangeable lens most of the time you'll find point and shoots in this price range and they're a fixed lens. I mean, if you go with the Fujifilm X100 series, that's a fixed lens camera. If you go with the Canon G7X series, that's a fixed lens camera. Um, even if you go with the Sony, I wanna say ZV, ZV-1? Yeah, the ZV-1 is a fixed lens camera. This camera allows you to change lenses and for playing in that same ballpark price range, it's, one of my favorite, if not my favorite choice for this system. Next, we're gonna talk about quality. Personally, I think this camera holds up when it comes to quality. I mean, it's right on par with every other Sony APS-C camera that came out around this time and even competes with some of the newer ones. I shoot most of my videos in 4K uh, at 24 or 30 frames per second, and I do that so I can have the ability to crop in. And whenever I'm doing that, I'm not noticing any drop or loss in quality. Um, especially since most of these are going up on YouTube or on social media, I'm not seeing any real loss of quality or uh, lack of quality in my video exports. As far as color grading, I am not shooting in log. I'm actually shooting in just one of the normal picture profiles here on the camera. And all I do in post is add a little bit of color correction and throw a LUT on top. Uh, I mean, there's a little bit more to my process than that, but that's generally what I'm doing. And you tell me whether or not you think that this quality is acceptable. Now let's talk about a few features. The eye autofocus in this camera has been updated from one of, from some of the older, older versions, and it has yet to fail me. At least I don't think it has. Another feature that I think is pretty cool, but that I have not personally used is the product showcase feature. Uh, so basically this is a feature where you know how people usually cover their eyes or their face when they want to show something in front of the camera. I believe I did do that in a video, but like I could have used product showcase, but I never have that feature on. And so I can't really speak to it, but that is a feature that exists in this camera. The next feature is SNQ mode. And this has been around for a long time, but it is something that I find extremely useful, especially when I want to do some slow motion footage or if I'm trying to create something like a time lapse. Throwing the camera straight into SQ mode and capturing that footage, whether horizontally or vertically, has really sped up my workflow and taking advantage of that is extremely useful. The next feature that people really complain about but I find pretty useful is Active Steady Shot. Um, so you'll notice that if you do use Active Steady Shot, there is a pretty heavy crop on it. Um, I'm not gonna BS you on that. The crop is pretty bad, but because this 
camera does not have IBIS in it, you know, if, you, if you're using a lens that doesn't have a steady shot or a vibration control or anything like that, then if you're hand holding, this thing is, it's gonna pick up every jitter, every bump, every everything. Using active steady shot helps balance some of those things out. Personally, I use it whenever I'm running and gunning with this camera and, you know, for, like I said, throwing things up on social media, throwing quick vlogs or things up on YouTube, it's very, very solid and reliable. The last feature is something that I wanna highlight in case you wanna use it, but I literally never use it, and that is the skin smoothing feature. Um, it's one of those new AI things that Sony's put in these cameras. Personally, I just don't use it. I don't have a need for it, but it is there. Uh, as an option if you get this camera or try this camera and it's something that you're interested in. The next category is photos. So I actually made an entire video on whether or not I think this camera is good for photos. You can check that out. It's gonna be linked somewhere around here and definitely in the description. But if you want the nitty gritty and the short version, uh, this camera is great for photos. It's the same sensor that exists in the APS-C line for Sony. So same 24 megapixel sensor, um, same color science. Everything is sharp. I've had, you know, no weird or random things. This is definitely great for uh, everyday picture use, social media picture use. Um, I've even used this on a couple client things. Uh, just make sure that you're using the right glass when it comes to taking the pictures. Um, I did not get this camera with the kit lens, so I can't speak to the kit lens, but all of the glass that I have uh, are Tamron lenses and a couple Sony lenses, and you know the photos that come out of here are on par with all the other Sony photos. If you're enjoying the video so far, I would appreciate a thumbs up. We're still gonna get into the cons, but you know, if there's a question that you have or something that you want me to dive a little bit deeper on, go ahead and leave a comment and I can either leave a text response or I might even make a follow-up video for you. Next, let's talk about some of the improvements that I wish existed on this camera. I literally mentioned this in one of the other points that was, you know, one of the features, but this camera does not have IBIS. It does not have in-body stabilization. It will pick up every bump every jitter, every tiny micro jitter, every shake, it's gonna pick up everything. Uh, so that is something that, you know, if you don't have steady hands, you may want to invest in a lens that can help compensate or throw this on a gimbal. If you are gonna throw this camera on a gimbal, I would definitely recommend adding some weight to it. It is extremely light, so unless you're using one of those uh, lighter, camera gimbals, like even maybe a phone gimbal. Um, if you're gonna have a lighter lens on it, this thing this thing definitely needs the weight. Uh, I have a Zoom Weevil S, and you know, if I don't put something heavy on this camera when I put it on that gimbal, it's just not gonna work. The next point is the rolling shutter. So basically rolling shutter is that jello, jelly effect whenever you're whip panning or like moving the camera. Um, and this camera has it pretty bad. Basically, this is something that happens when cameras don't have in-body stabilization or the technology is just not on par with newer cameras and things. Higher-end cameras usually combat this with stabilization and better sensor technology. And since this camera doesn't necessarily have that, if you're gonna be panning or moving this camera around a lot, it's something to pay attention to. Most people probably won't even notice uh, but it is something that I wanted to call out because if you're using this as an A cam and you're moving a lot, it's something that's gonna show up in your footage. The last point I wanna make in this video is that there are rumors that Sony is coming out with a Mark II version of this camera. And so most people are probably thinking if that's gonna happen, if the new version's gonna come out, should you get this one or should you wait for the new version? I think the answer to that question is if you're on the fence and you're considering getting the new one, I would just wait and see what the new version has. Um, rumors are that it's gonna come out this summer, so within the next couple months or so, and you'll be able to see whether Sony has made improvements that are worth upgrading to the new version of this camera. Personally, if they made something with IBIS, uh, with some of the newer eye tracking features, uh, and maybe a slightly larger sensor, then it may be worth upgrading. But 
that's only if it's coming in at around the same price because if you want those things you might as well just go ahead and get an a6700 because it's basically very very similar if you're just getting started with content creation and you want an interchangeable lens camera and you want to be in the sony ecosystem or you're someone like me who's already got sony gear but you're looking for like a solid daily driver or a solid b cam or c cam then I can't recommend this thing enough. It has been incredible. We didn't talk about battery life because I already mentioned that in my first impressions video. Um, it uses some of the older, smaller Sony batteries. That's, you know, it, it is what it is. I can't recommend this camera enough. Since picking it up and using it nearly every day for the last 90 days, I haven't even touched my G7X Mark III, um, and that's saying something. This camera has easily become my daily driver. It's usually paired up with the older Sony 16mm f2.8 lens. Um, that's a smaller pancake lens. And, you know, this thing fits in my pocket. It comes with me everywhere. I stick it on a Joby Gorilla Pod, and well, I'm off to the races. Like, I, I always have this camera with me. I never feel uh, uncomfortable about bringing it with me places. I never feel awkward or weird carrying it around. Um, it's not too big it's not it doesn't like draw attention to me and so I absolutely love having this thing with me if you're interested in picking up one of these cameras for yourself or one of the other cameras that I mentioned uh, feel free to use one of the links down in the description below it's no extra cost to you but I will receive a small kickback it's a great way to you know show support for the channel and show support for me thanks for watching until next time don't forget to do the work, believe in yourself, and keep creating. Peace.